An adrenergic antagonist is a drug that inhibits the function of adrenergic receptors. There are five adrenergic receptors, which are divided into two groups. The first group of receptors are the beta, beta, adrenergic receptors. There are beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3 receptors. The second group contains the alpha, alpha, adrenoreceptors. There are only alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors. Adrenergic receptors are located near the heart, kidneys, lungs, and gastrointestinal tract. There are also alpha-adrenoreceptors that are located on vascular smooth muscle. Antagonists reduce or block the signals of agonists. They can be drugs, which are added to the body for therapeutic reasons, or endogenous ligands. The alpha-adrenergic antagonists have different effects from the beta-adrenergic antagonists. Pharmacology Adrenergic ligands are endogenous proteins that modulate and evoke specific cardiovascular effects. Adrenergic antagonists reverse the natural cardiovascular effect, based on the type of adrenoreceptor being blocked. For example, if the natural activation of the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor leads to vasoconstriction, an alpha-1 adrenergic antagonist will result in vasodilation. Some adrenergic antagonists, mostly beta antagonists, passively diffuse from the gastrointestinal tract. From there, they bind to albumin and alpha-1 acid glycoprotein in the plasma, allowing for a wide spread through the body. From there, the lipophilic antagonists are metabolized in the liver and eliminated with urine while the hydrophilic ones are eliminated unchanged. Mechanisms of action There are three different types of antagonists. Competitive while only a few alpha-adrenergic antagonists are competitive, all beta-adrenergic antagonists are competitive antagonists. Competitive antagonists are a type of reversible antagonists. A competitive antagonist will attach itself to the same binding site of the receptor that the agonist will bind to. Even though it is in activator region, the antagonist will not activate the receptor. This type of binding is reversible as increasing the concentration of agonist will outcompete the concentration of antagonist, resulting in receptor activation. Adrenergic competitive antagonists are shorter lasting than the other two types of antagonists. While the antagonists for alpha and beta receptors are usually different compounds, there has been recent drug development that affects both types of the adrenoreceptors. Examples Two examples of competitive adrenergic antagonists are propranolol and phentolamine. Phentolamine is a competitive and non-selective alpha adrenoreceptor antagonist. Propanolol is a beta adrenoreceptor antagonist. Non-competitive While competitive antagonists bind to the agonist or ligand binding site of the receptor reversibly, non-competitive antagonists can either bind to the ligand site or other site called the allosteric site. A receptor's agonist does not bind to its allosteric binding site. The binding of a non-competitive antagonist is irreversible. If the non-competitive antagonist binds to the allosteric site and an agonist binds to the ligand site, the receptor will remain unactivated. An example of an adrenergic non-competitive antagonist is phenoxybenzamine. This drug is a non-selective alpha-adrenergic antagonist, which means it binds to both alpha receptors. Incompetitive. There are few if any adrenergic and competitive antagonists. An incompetitive antagonist is slightly different from the other two types of antagonists. The action of an incompetitive antagonist is dependent on the receptor's prior activation. This means only after the agonist binds to the receptor can the antagonist block the receptor's function. Examples Alpha blockers Phentolamine Beta blockers Propranolol Nabibolol Atenolol Oxprenolol Metoprolol Timolol Pindolol Nadolol Pindolol Esmolol Asabutolol 
Sotolal Talinolal Batoxolol Mixed action Labetalol Carvedalol Major effects Adrenergic antagonists have inhibitory or opposing effects on the receptors in the adrenergic system. The adrenergic system modulates the fight or flight response. Since this response, which is mostly seen as an increase in blood pressure, is produced by the release of the endogenous adrenergic ligands, administration of an adrenergic antagonist results a decrease in blood pressure, which is controlled by both heart rate and vasculature tone. Administration of an adrenergic antagonist that specifically targets the beta receptors, results in this decrease in blood pressure by slowing or reducing cardiac output. Medical uses Adrenergic antagonists are mostly used for cardiovascular disease. The adrenergic antagonists are widely used for lowering blood pressure and relieving hypertension. These antagonists have a been proven to relieve the pain caused by myocardial infarction, and also the infarction size, which correlates with heart rate. There are few non cardiovascular uses for adrenergic antagonists. Alpha adrenergic antagonists are also used for treatment of uretic stones, pain and panic disorders, withdrawal, and anesthesia. Limitations while these adrenergic antagonists are used for treating cardiovascular disease, mainly hypertension, they can evoke harmful cardiac events. Some adrenergic antagonists have a diminished ability to reduce stroke compared to placebo drugs. Side effects and toxicity While adrenergic antagonists have been used for years, there are multiple issues with using this class of drug. When overused, adrenergic antagonists can result in bradycardia, hypotension, hyperglycemia and even hypodynamic shock. This is because adrenergic stimulation by agonists results in normal calcium channel regulation. If these adrenergic receptors are blocked too often, there will be an excess in calcium channel inhibition, which causes most of these problems. See also Adrenergic receptor Alpha blocker Antagonist Beta blocker Propanolol Sympathetic nervous system References External links Adrenergic plus antagonists at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings, MESH.